Hi there, Sarah Mitchell from Inspired Education Services here and today I want to talk to you about the differences between analytic and synthetic phonics. In previous videos you might have heard me talking about the importance of phonics and phonics teaching and that there are several different phonics teaching approaches, not all of them being equal. I want to start off first with analytic phonics. Analytic phonics is the process of going from the whole to the part. So usually we come across a word most often incidentally in the text and we look at the whole word and then we um, make analogies to other words. So we might say something to the student like, this is late, now you can spell mate and fate. There tends not to be a huge amount of explicit instruction in an analytic phonics approach. It's just kind of implied and assumed that the student will pick it up. For some kids, this will work, but for struggling readers and spellers, they might not connect those dots so closely. Another feature of analytic phonics is that the focus tends to be on the initial sound or the onset and any rhyme patterns. So for example, we might look at a list of words like sat, pat, mat, fat and cat, but not really break those down into their individual phonemes. We're just really looking at how we can switch up the first sound and the rhyme. Now we know that one of the best indicators for how well a child will be able to pick up reading and spelling is how well they can manipulate phonemes or those individual sounds in spoken language. So we really want them to be able to do something like change sat to sap and change sap to sip so that we're switching around those individual sounds. This helps children to self-teach. So once they know all of the code and they're really good at manipulating those sounds, they're able to figure out new words in different contexts because they have strategies for being able to sound the word out once they've got good phonics knowledge. Another feature of analytic phonics is it tends to promote guessing. So looking at the first letter and guessing what the word might be, or looking at the first letter and thinking about the context of the sentence and guessing what the word might be, and we never want to teach struggling readers that the purpose of reading is to guess. Reading is not about guessing, it's about cracking the code. So it's a little less effective approach than a synthetic phonics approach. A synthetic phonics approach, well synthetic actually comes from the word synthesis. So it's where we blend together individual phonemes and words and make sure that we're sounding out the entire word. So in a synthetic phonics approach, all of the sounds in sat are equally important. We look at the s, but we also look at the a and the t, and we carefully decode the word from beginning to end, blending together each phoneme and each grapheme that represents those phonemes. A synthetic phonics approach involves explicit teaching of each part of the code. So we go from the part to the whole. We would teach the children that s quite often makes a s sound, a quite often makes an a sound and T quite often represents a T sound. And then we get them to blend those sounds together sat, until they can think of the word sat. So it's very explicit, it's very broken down and we make sure that we teach each part of the code really carefully. In a synthetic phonics approach, we usually teach reading and spelling as being reversible or being kind of inverse of each other to use a maths term. So if we can read and blend all of the sounds in sat, we're also learning that we can segment those sounds to be able to encode the word sat. So we're teaching those things in reverse of each other. And handwriting is a really important skill in this process because handwriting helps children to build up the motor memory of the word, as well as getting all of the sound properties and the visual representation of the phonic patterns that we use to represent those sounds in written words. In a synthetic phonics approach, we also only introduce texts that we know contain words that we have explicitly taught previously. And this makes sure that students have the maximum amount of success when reading texts. Of course, we also teach oral language skills through um, genuine literature, reading to children, talking to children about texts and play-based learning. But when it comes to teaching that code, it's really important that we use a synthetic and explicit approach because reading is not natural. Learning how to code crack is very hard. And so we need to make sure that we're teaching it in a really explicit and synthetic way. I hope this has helped you have a think about what you're doing in your phonics teaching. 
and whether you can make any tweaks to your program to make it slightly more synthetic. If you have any questions, please don't forget to comment below if you have any comments as well. I love to hear from you. Make sure you like, share and subscribe on this video and I will see you in the next video.